doesn't it? Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for, for joining us here this morning, putting some time aside on a, on a Friday morning, which is not always easy. So thanks for doing that. Uh, my name's Jack. I'm a business development manager here at DAP UK. So just before we dive into the nuts and bolts of the, the webinar this morning, I thought it'd be worthwhile giving you a brief itinerary of just what to expect this morning. So we'll, we'll start with some brief introductions, introduce the, the guys here at DAPT and kind of the services that we offer. We'll then hand over to Itchycraft and they'll give you a, a short presentation on the solution and kind of the issues that Itchycraft is designed to, to address, as well as give you a, a brief demonstration of uh, what, what the solution would look like in action. We'll then uh, we'll open it up at the, at the end to a, a short question and answer whether that be your own questions for Fritchie Craft or Microsoft 365 more generally. So this webinar, it will be recorded for those who maybe wanted to attend but couldn't, or for those of you who did attend but maybe want to re refer to it later on. Hopefully, also, you'll find it so interesting that you'll want to share it amongst other people in your organization as well. So just, uh, just to mention, this, this webinar is penciled in for 45 minutes. Good news, we'll probably not use all of that, so you'll get 10 minutes back on a Friday, which is always which is always a win. Okay, so at DAPT, just to give you a bit of context around DAPT, we're at, we are a Microsoft Gold partner and we're a Microsoft 365 consultancy. So we do work with organizations around driving usage and adoption of the M365 platform. Now, this can range from doing work around SharePoint, looking at security, governance and provisioning, or it can be around Microsoft Teams having a look at how organizations use the platform, maybe showing them some of the applications that they could maybe implement to help enhance their digital experience. Now, as a Microsoft Goal partner, we also work in partnership with various other pieces of text that we feel are a good enhancement to people who use Microsoft 365. One of which is, of course, Itchycraft, which is why we're here today to discuss that. Now, I'll not steal Nico's thunder by doing his own introduction. So just before we hand over to, to, to Nico, I wanted to introduce my colleagues, Daniel and Stephen, so that they can give a bit of background to their, to their experience in the industry. Just, be, just before we start, I wanted to say, if there's any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to pop it in the chat or raise your hand and take yourself off mute and we can answer them as, as we go. So with that, Dan, Steve, do you want to hop in here? Yeah, thanks, Jack. So uh, my name's Dan. Um, I've been a Microsoft 365 consultant for over, well, 10 years now, probably. Uh, started off with SharePoint, but I've worked with all of the, uh, the cloud platforms uh, and really enjoyed working with customers to show them how they can get um, you know, uh, a return on their investment in the platform. Um, so looking forward to the session today. Cheers, Dan, and, and likewise, hi, everyone. Um, Stephen Port uh, co-founded uh, DAPT with, with Daniel. Um, we've got a strong focus on sort of all things Microsoft 365 and, and making sure that our customers get the most out of it, uh, adopt to it well, uh, and also with the amount of change that's going on and really sort of leverage the tools um, to the maximum capability um, and where there are those gaps. Um, as Jack has mentioned, um, for that sort of greater employee experience um, uh, to bring on sort of great partners such as Itchycraft um, to, to make sure that's you know, really uh, delivered to your end users in a great way. Perfect, short and sweet. Okay. Uh, cool, I think with that, the, I suppose the, the only next step is hand over to you, yourself, Nico, if you want to take it away. Certainly, Jack, yeah. Well, um, thank you for, uh, for having us. Uh, a great partner to us, to Itchycraft, uh, and I'm very happy to uh, to uh, show a few things more about uh, Itchycraft, uh, the product itself, of course, but also the kind of problems that we're solving. Um, generally speaking, what we try to do at Itchycraft is to offer the ultimate that we experienced by building a, a personal digital workplace, uh, and especially that personal aspect that's really, really important to us. And that's where we believe we fill an important gap inside the, the Microsoft 365 ecosystem and the different uh, products that uh, Microsoft offers. Um, you can see here on the left uh, how we sort of embed into Teams and on uh, on mobile as well. 
Uh, and that, ha of course, has uh, very much everybody's attention nowadays as the point where we're delivering a lot of the experiences and we uh, embed uh, effortlessly in, into the, uh, the experience that Microsoft offers. A um, bit of the agenda. Well, mo most of the housekeeping was already uh, uh, covered. q and the chat. Uh, you can also raise your hand if you want to interrupt and the recording will be shared. I'll be taking you through a bit of the background of Itchycraft where everything started out. I'd like to talk about the evolution of the digital workplace and where we fit in, the problems that we solve, the challenges that we see for users and organizations, which we believe we solve very effectively, and then show you the HCRF reports as well um, uh, towards the end and take some, some questions and give some, provide some answers. Um, if we look back at where it started out for us as an organization, uh, we were actually um, involved in consultancy uh, before starting HCRF. Uh, and we got a, a really big assignment by an international bank called the Rabobank in the Netherlands. They were moving into the cloud and uh, as they were moving over their intranet, they uh, looked to introduce elements that were more engaging for users, uh, more personalized and relevant to them. Uh, and we got this sort of uh, open playing field at that time to think of a solution that would, uh, would fit uh, you know, their, their needs. Um, out of that, a solution was born, which was then called the Itchycraft widgets. So to a SharePoint page, we added widgets that were relevant and personal and actionable and released that to uh, to their 35,000 users inside the, the Rabobank. Um, not long after seeing the effect that this solution had uh, within their migration to the cloud, um, we opened up discussions to uh, take this product as a standalone product uh, into a, a separate company, um, uh, Itchcraft, and that was done uh, towards the end of 2019. Uh, throughout 2020, we had a, a whole backlog of items that were still being resolved and improvements to be made in, in the product. Uh, but as we were gearing up, we were also expanding uh, the number of partners and, and, and customers uh, globally, and a great example of that is, is also put up here, uh, uh, Red Bull. So where we see that we up uh, appeal very much to enterprise customers who are trying to offer that personalization into a very mature internet. Uh, at the same time, we found, especially with the introduction of Microsoft Teams, um, that we can also deliver a, a great experience inside Teams for smaller organizations that have already moved into the cloud. So you don't have to be one of the big players to really benefit from, uh, from what I'll be showing you. Uh, it's actually something that can be implemented in a quite short time and deliver value for organizations, both large, but also small. Uh, but you'll see that towards the end as well. Um, so that brings us to, to the product now, and I'll, uh, I'll elaborate on that. Um, but first, let me take a step back into sort of the evolution of the digital workplace and, and what has led up to, to this very point where a lot of our customers are today. Uh, if we look back uh, and uh, the, uh, the partners within well, the guys within DOT uh, know this uh, only uh, too well. Uh, we've been through a lot of phases in the past 20 years, uh, also with Microsoft products, but then the market in, in general, going through portal sites, resembling things that we saw on the internet, on the internet, um, intranets as we brought in uh, files and, and people search, and then, then also we have the need to customize those intranets. A lot of those customizations led to internet in the box solutions. Uh, at the same time, we saw this emergence of um, more interaction through social networks uh, and companies look to introduce those kind of features either into Microsoft products with the acquisition of Yammer, for instance, uh, but we also have social internet platforms that exist outside the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, now, all of this is something that if you are deciding to roll out an internet today, uh, you feel you have these choices right in front of you. Uh, do I do it out of the box? Do I employ a third party in that? Uh, but actually, today, the you know the the way of work, especially within a hybrid world, I shifted a bit to not coining it just an internet or a social internet, but looking at the digital workplace as a whole. And the digital workplace as a whole is a lot more than just just the internet. Um, and the digital workplace as a whole is something that is also looked at differently. And to sort of emphasize what is different is that a lot of what we were doing up till now, and that was also because 
things had not moved yet into the cloud, it was very technology driven. So new versions came out, new capabilities, we introduced those capabilities. We might still have identified a gap and then we hope that in the next version that would be released. Um, with a cloud subscription, a lot of companies face the challenge that now they have more than they can utilize and the question of what to use, what, when is, uh, comes up all of the time. And it gives people a great opportunity to be a lot more user driven. So it's not the technology that's holding us back. It's more to have a, a, you know, a great view on what people need, what's relevant to them. Another way to look at it is that if we look at the internet itself, it's one of the places that people can visit. Uh, people would like to see that place be where they work. So be inside maybe Outlook if they were still working out of Outlook, but more and more people like to see that within Teams. And that's, of course, something that Microsoft recognizes as well. Uh, and that we've actually recognized some years ago in that journey that I've just described to you. So we've been on that journey to be more user driven and to meet people where they work. And at first that was SharePoint, but for us, it's now also Microsoft Teams. If you look, though, at the whole of the employee experience, that digital workplace is not just that internet. It's also the collaboration, it's process management, it's learning, and everyday new things get added to that whole overall employee experience. In that, of course, Microsoft is positioning Teams to be the interface to, to everything, with all the apps that you can add there, different experiences that you can have, and you can see that also all the new features being released will have some sort of impact on Teams. So if we look at the whole FIFA suite of products, and here specifically, it's the FIFA Connections logo, but all of these experiences are actually, uh, you know, you can use them within Microsoft Teams. That's where they land for Microsoft. And the internet itself has landed into uh, FIFA Connections. Um, what we've done since the introduction of FIFA Connections at the beginning of this year, uh, we've, we've, we started integrating. And, and with that integration, what we can offer is a level of personalization. So out of these tools, both Teams and FIFA Connections bringing in the standard internet, is that truly a personal inter digital workplace? We believe it's not. And that's where, where uh, Itchycraft comes in. So if we look at some of the challenges for the employee, not just considering the tools, but the problems that people face, uh, people need many different apps to get the full picture. Um, you know, it's great. I've mentioned buying that Microsoft 65 license. They get all of those apps there. Uh, but that's not all of the line of business apps that they're using. I mean, there's a lot of things out there uh, that they that they need to use on top of that. Um, all of those apps look and behave different, not only within Microsoft, but certainly outside that outside that ecosystem. That's something that employees have to deal with. Um, and people often have to think where to look. So we see that also with the addition of teams, different teams, different channels, different places for files, different places for information through chat. Uh, but emails are also still there and maybe messages in communities are still there and file shares are still there. So I think uh, things have only become more complicated for the employee to, to be sure, you know, to be able to find uh, the information. They first need to think about where is that information likely stored. Um, and if they arrive at, you know, that place of information, it's impossible to adapt things to the way they work. And that's also something that Microsoft is sort of driving. If you look at SharePoint or if you look at Teams, most of what and please experience there is driven by administrators. Administrators have the permission to, to set up policies, to push certain apps, to allow certain apps, to, uh, to show certain web parts on pages. So from the viewpoint of the employee, they cannot really change anything. They just have to adapt to, to how, it's, how it's offered. Um, in this process, knowledge workers are switching apps many times per hour. And that's something that we've you know, that we address with, with our product and want to reduce. Uh, and it's quite a serious issue because all of that context switching is, is leading to a lot of productivity loss uh, every day uh, of the week. So if we look at where we position ourselves, we offer this personal digital workplace. And that's a digital workplace, a page that's unified. It's personal, uh, actually in two ways, both audience targeted and that people can change their page, but you'll see that in the demo. Uh, what we try to offer through our widgets is also to, to offer relevant content, to stay in the flow of work, as Microsoft also calls it, and uh, thus to also make things actionable, to not have to switch from one interface to the next. Um, companies, of course, would like to 
solve these challenges for employees. And they, they do recognize that those challenges are there, but how do you target different applications and information? There's not one singular way to, to do that. And, and Microsoft also doesn't give you one answer. Microsoft always offers platforms, many different options to, to achieve this, but not one particular way to do so. Um, if you then look at integrating into a, a unified digital workplace, uh, that's often complex. It's been tried many times over the years uh, on SharePoint at least, and maybe bringing that into Teams uh, changes the perspective, but it remains to be very complex. And any user customization, if we would allow, if companies would allow that, comes at a very high price. Uh, so that's not something that uh, a lot of companies are willing to, to, to invest in, especially because Microsoft is moving ahead so quickly that any, any type of customization, of course, can, can then break down. Um, and as such, offering a single interface remains an enormous challenge to, to companies. Um, and that challenge is an important one because, you know, uh, as people go through those different apps, they need to check different feeds to see if they're up to date. And this, this increases stress, especially in, in hybrid scenarios where, you know, the only source of information basically goes through the screen that I'm working with. Um, and if we would consider the internet sort of the traditional you know landing page to offer all of the information what research shows is that actually the, the actual interaction with the internet is quite low uh, and that only sort of uh, echoes uh, the sentiment that a lot of people have that they cannot integrate everything into that one single place uh, being the being the internet uh, again if we look at how we uh, have solved those uh, or are meeting those company needs um, what we've done with Itchycraft is we've created a very compliant product. Uh, we don't take the data out of the, the tenant. We just bring an experience in, um, which is tailored to, to users within the organization. So we can audience target the, the boards, which you'll see in the demo as well, and the widgets and the content uh, to specific uh, audiences uh, and thus make it relevant for, for people. Um, we bring in a rather small footprint. So there's just a, a code being brought in experience, uh, but from the start, we've made it very extensible. So we've looked at some of the great progress that, that Microsoft has made with the, the SharePoint framework, all of those things and the, the customization that exists there. And we've built on top of that, uh, our own sort of extensible model so that people can go beyond what we're offering out of the box there. Um, so let's get on to the, uh, the demo of the ports itself so that all of these things really come to, to life for you. Um, should be able to see uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, and maybe because I've mentioned that at the beginning, um, we've embedded our product, uh, the Itchycraft ports as it's called now, uh, into Fever connections in the whole experience. And you can actually see that uh, by opening up the, the, the side panel here which comes from Microsoft, uh, which offers here the sites and news. And then if you actually activate the global navigation, it will show you the global navigation as well. It also brings in the navigation from the hub site and the site that you've nominated as sort of the landing page for Fever Connections. So you can go in and, and navigate through the whole internet as well as, as search through both Teams and, and SharePoint. So we've taken that on board and within that, uh, what we find here is your own personal board. So here, Jago sees his own personal board and that board is filled with widgets. So he can navigate around Teams for collaboration. He can navigate around SharePoint and search around SharePoint in Teams to find his information. Uh, but at the same time, he has this personalized board at his disposal. Um, and within this board, um, I said he can sort of stay in the flow of work. So he can open up news, which is targeted at him, the board as such is targeted at him, widgets here are targeted at him, and, and uh, uh, the news is. Um, but he has some influence over what he sees. And one thing that he can change is the sites that he's following. There's some essential sites which are uh, set by a communications team that they believe that they, uh, Jago has to follow, but then he can jump in and he can unfavorite and favorite sites and add other sites throughout the organization to so start following news from those sites and save it out. And that's how Jago can make the news that's coming to him uh, more relevant. Uh, at the same time with these widgets, he can start changing them around to his needs. He can come in and actually add other widgets. And I'll look at that in a minute as well, the type of widgets that can be added. 
but what I first want to show is how from this single page you can sort of stay in the flow of work and find people to collaborate with, look at reports, uh, but also look at his emails. So this is some of the new emails coming in. As you can see, Diego is a, a big fan of Microsoft Viva, having <laughs> just unread emails from Microsoft Viva. Um, but as he goes through his emails, he can get a, a snapshot of, of uh, what it's about and see if, uh, if it need, requires follow-up. So maybe set a flag, uh, maybe uh, delete an item uh, on the flow of work. Uh, he can have a look at some of up his upcoming meetings and maybe join the Teams meeting right from here or have a look at the file that's relevant to this meeting. So we bring in a lot of contextual information uh, around these widgets to make them very actionable. Uh, and all of these widgets interact with their direct data sources. So uh, that can be OneDrive, which is updated directly, or the, uh, the calendar and the inbox here, uh, but also the tasks, for instance. Uh, and maybe you've seen already at the top, uh, every widget that has something to notify to the user also produces this little notification at the top. Um, so if I go in here and I add a, re uh, a task, Again, in the flow of work, I need to write a report. Shouldn't forget about that. That's updated, and you saw a change up here, it changes down here, but actually it also changes within Microsoft To Do at the same time. So a lot of these widgets are connected to the Microsoft Graph, and all of this, all these changes are instant. So if you go to any of the sources behind this, you'll find that those changes are instant. So if I tick this off, it's ticked off well, basically throughout Microsoft 365. Same goes for the planner activities that are targeted at me. Uh, another great example of uh, how actionable these uh, these widgets are is, you know, if I go through and maybe find myself, Diego, in the sales department, um, I can hover over Diego and start a chat, send an email, uh, see who he reports to, uh, look at the emails that I've exchanged, uh, and more so files. So uh, within this, uh, you can get all of this rich information uh, again, keeping you in the flow of work, uh, making you actionable, uh, and you know directly starting a, char uh, a chat right from this uh, from this uh, dashboard right here. Uh, and the same goes for all of these you know different experiences, looking at reports, uh, launching apps, uh, and uh, as uh, you could see on the news, uh, all of these widgets they come with this uh, settings icon. So I can go in, and for instance on the apps, uh, I can change start changing things around. So maybe I want to put Power BI desktop at the top, uh, or I want to have a look at what else is targeted at me. And again, all of these different apps, they've been registered centrally, and then uh, you know through uh, through audience targeting, we can deliver that to Jago because Prince is part of the sales team here. So I can go in and maybe add Salesforce, and probably want to add that to the top as well and save it, and then have that sitting here. So I can make things more relevant to myself. Uh, you know, maybe I want to have that show up bigger than what it is, because it uh, was a bit of a carousel showing. Uh, this also shows off sort of the flexibility of the different displays that will adapt automatically to to the needs of of Diego. Uh, now I want to take one step back and show sort of the onboarding experience of of this board. Because it's uh, also through the work that we've done with many clients, it's a best practice to sort of prepare a board uh, for a particular role and then allow people to further customize that. So uh, as you sort of onboard to this application or if you're new to your organization, you can uh, choose either a template or we can enforce a template to be targeted at you because you're part of a certain group. So you have a bit of a preview and uh, in this case, Diego is part of sales, so it probably start with the sales board. Uh, and then he gets an introduction past all of the elements on the page. So he can add different widgets. Uh, he can move those widgets around. He can resize them as you've seen. Uh, he can configure the widget. So choose the, the content inside the widget. And under more options, he actually gets the choice to delete certain widgets. If he then needs more space, that's something that sits here at the top. And let me show you that directly. As I add different widgets onto the page, things can get quite busy. So I might want to break out and maybe create a reporting board somewhere where I get, you know, put all my reports together, the report section, uh, put those things nice and big onto the, onto the board and maybe go in and uh, add some other ones that have been targeted at me or actually go to the Power BI service that sits behind 
and find some of the reports that through permissions are available to me. I think this is an important point because what we do with this dashboard is to, we roll up information. All that information resides inside your tenant, uh, adheres to the policies that you've set, and will respect all of the permissions. So you don't have to go through and set a lot of permissions or do anything other than just you know, offer this tool to your users, and it will follow all of the settings that you've set inside Microsoft 365. I'll uh, back out of here and save this out. And again, you have that experience of changing things around within that within that carousel, basically. Now, if I do one step back and go to Jago's homepage, and we have a quick look at the widget catalog, um, there you can see that. Uh, there's many different widgets which are available and again this can be targeted to particular users as well as the content of those widgets uh, we see some that are very defined uh, like birthdays or favorites uh, we can also see variations of the embed widget so we can bring in experiences through embedding code and creating a widget uh, out of that uh, as well as widgets that uh, address things like uh, power bi or uh, tableau uh, and let me just uh, pull in one widget to give an example of, of how that process goes. I can add that to the page. So it gets here at the, uh, sits here at the bottom. I can then decide where it needs to be placed. Uh, and again, this widget has a number of sort of default views. So I don't need to decide the views. It's just an optimal view that it will give me. Uh, I can then go through and find some of the feeds that have been targeted at me or again, add other feeds and as such bring in external news onto my page that's relevant to me. So in this case, my corporate news sits next to news that I've chosen myself. Uh, and it's very important for user adoption actually that um, people get this sort of mix of a prepared board that's set to their persona uh, and be able to change a few things around so that it becomes truly personal to them. And then, you know, you don't get that not invented here syndrome. People actually start changing the board to their needs and they find that this is very relevant to their, their work then. So I'd like to uh, conclude there and jump back to the, uh, the presentation. Well, there's a lot more, of course, that can be shown. And let's pick it up from where I left off. Um, so what you've seen is actually the experience inside Microsoft Teams. Uh, and we deliver that also in SharePoint and across the mobile apps of, of Microsoft. We don't have our own mobile solution, uh, but we just piggyback on uh, the Microsoft apps which are out there. Uh, and embed ourselves in a similar a similar fashion. Um, what I've shown you in some of the uh, uh, the different well in the the uh, the widget catalog is actually different capabilities. And what we often see is that these capabilities are introduced over time. And important to realize is that you know behind these capabilities is actually your Microsoft 365 tenant. So as you've set up different experiences there, we can bring those experiences to the end user seamlessly uh, through the widgets. And one of those is personal productivity that basically relies very much on having your email in the cloud. So if you're there, you can have your email and calendar and tasks sitting there. Um, if you have OneDrive set up, OneDrive is brought in uh, and we have different customized widgets. So here, uh, let's say that you're part of a uh, uh, development unit uh, writing code. We can bring in the work items of Azure DevOps as part of your personal productivity. As such, within Teams and on the dashboard, you don't need to go into emails anymore. You don't need to go into Azure DevOps directly, but you can get an overview of your work right in one place. Uh, another important thing, of course, to bring in is things like corporate news and events. Um, and we currently, um, it's in a version uh, 1.0. We have a, a widget with which you can define must read items. Uh, and use that widget to onboard people. So this is the onboard and inform widget at the moment. The name might change over time, but this actually allows me as an organizer within the organization to set a number of items that people have to go through um, as a, a must read or an onboarding, um, uh, you know, as part of their introduction to the organization or uh, within uh, some compliance uh, measures. So again, this is something that relies on if you've enabled these things and you know, you sort of empower the, the, the trickle down of you know, organizational policies and information to, and events to your, to your users. Uh, then another category is actually that the dashboard can be used as 
at least to break out to all sorts of other experiences because of course it's not only teams and microsoft solutions but it's a lot of other things that we use throughout our workday so that's any number of applications those applications can be SaaS, they can be desktop applications, they can also be virt virtualized applications. We can bring them all together in this application launcher. So if you're using Citrix or VMware, Windows Virtual Desktop, all of that can actually land within this uh, widget and you can audience target it as well so that people get the relevant links in one location. But of course, also the things that they favor across the internet, the teams that are in, uh, the personal favorites that they like to, uh, record and that could include things like you know their uh, personal banking or news sites whatever is relevant to them and that gives that extra sort of uh, stickiness as well uh, uh, making that their own place uh, and the articles that they like to read for later um, and finally we have a category where we bring in different experiences so uh, we've seen the power behind external news I've talked a bit about the embed uh, but we also have a great story around a uh, customizable widget that you can use for development. So we have a template that you can use. And here there's a few examples what some of our partners and customers have done with that template. So um, for instance, they've built in, uh, brought in a world clock because they're in, in multiple locations. Um, some people have brought in a, a scrum poker game you know, to, to sort of uh, start voting on uh, what they should uh, uh, should do next in the priority. Um, training, so uh, from any type of training catalog, and of course this is often, you know, uh, specific to organizations, uh, they, they've they brought in uh, the training that's in the catalog and the trainings that, uh, that need to be followed by an employee. Uh, lunch, canteen, very popular item, of course, what's, it, what's in the canteen, uh, maybe you should book, uh, your your table, booking, travel. Uh, again, a lot of these sort of backend systems are most likely not Microsoft systems that you're realizing this through. So this is why we developed a, uh, you know, a, a template uh, that uh, gets you going very quickly to start delivering this kind of experiences, but then connected to the APIs of the relevant systems, of course, within your organization from right within the, uh, within the uh, HCraft boards. Uh, and then finally, also some time management, which of course a very popular category um, as well as an example of things that we've seen people build. The great thing is that once you get the solution into your tenant, this type of extensibility will show inside your own catalog. So that's not something that you will share out with us, uh, but you can actually create your own bespoke customization uh, within, within your tenant. Uh, and then we also see that this sort of widget model really allows customers to, with their users, think about what would fit what inside the box, inside the concept of a widget, and how can you make it actionable? So we see that this really helps customers as well to sort of uh, get this tunnel vision on delivering value because it's inside the widget instead of talking about uh, workflows or uh, custom development, or web apps that need to be developed to do exactly that same thing. You can really narrow it down to something that's actionable and targeted at certain audiences within the organization. Uh, to wrap things up, uh, just to sort of emphasize that the, you know, the, the process of getting this in, um, it's, it's quite quick and it's also because it depends on information which is already inside your tenant. So you need to go through um, uh, the steps um, and that can be done with uh, our partner DAPT very well uh, of identifying the stakeholders, looking at the personas, um, seeing what kind of widgets should be loaded, the templates that I've shown you, and what kind of data should go in. Uh, and as you sort of onboard different, um, you know, uh, workloads uh, from Microsoft 65 into your organization, you can go back and add those things as widgets. So if, for instance, Dubt will help you through the process of, uh, you know, starting up the use of, of Power BI, uh, you can then bring in that Power BI widget once you've completed and delivered that to users to actually give it, you know, places in the hands of the users. So whereas this has quite a short implementation time, it's important, of course, to sit down with a partner and enable all of those different things like the corporate news or the Power BI or any of those workloads in Microsoft 365. Uh, and of course, finally, there's of introduce, I mean, uh, the final step within sort of getting this project launched is also introducing it to the organization. But also there we see that, as you've probably also seen, it's quite intuitive in using it. So it requires very little further explanation to sort of get people going on the product. Um, with that, I'd like to 
wrap it up and you know thank you for your attention and also ask Jack if in the meantime there were any questions asked in the chat or if there's any questions in general at this point. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if that thinks you've covered everything, Nico. Yes, uh, everything except, of course, for some of the uh, admin experiences, but that would uh, take a bit too much time. And you know, I can encourage everybody to get in contact with you guys to uh, to get a, uh, a you know a tour around those kind of features that you get as an admin. Uh, one good thing to mention is that uh, the admin settings are actually in the in the product. I can I can sneak preview that a bit um, so you don't need to go into sort of a separate uh, experience there and uh, uh, you know there's not a, a separate backend again everything's embedded into one and the same uh, same place making it very practical for people to to manage this side of the, uh, of the house as well I see we have a question how can someone get started with Etchycraft Yes, uh, we actually offer a, uh, a download which is not limited. And uh, in that, the only thing that happens is so it's fully functional. We show a banner at the top. Uh, most of our customers either download it directly from us or request that from a partner uh, and get going with sort of a, uh, a demo environment for themselves, knowing that as they invest over time in configuring that, that same thing can actually be launched. So at one point, the only thing you need to do is acquire the license and it's a licensed product, uh, but it can simply be, be installed from App Source and can get going, well, basically in, in 30 minutes. So uh, yeah, it's quite easy to, to get things going in that sense. Yeah, and that's not feature limited at all. No. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else at this time? See somebody's typing in the chat. It's always that point in the webinar. If there's no questions, you don't know. Does that mean you've covered everything and there are no questions or are people thinking about their lunch? It's 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 a balancing act, isn't it? No. Well, if there aren't any more questions, people can always feel free to, to get in touch afterwards. Yeah, Nico, thank you very much. That was sure. that great of Gave a great snapshot into, into what's possible in terms of customization as well. So I'm learning some stuff as well there. Uh, I, I wanted to say thanks very much uh, to everyone else for joining us this morning. Um, if there are any questions and people want to get in touch afterwards, uh, you see there's a, there's an email address there, info at uk. You can also uh, reach us on our website as well as on LinkedIn. I would just say if you haven't already, feel free to give our, our page a follow on, on LinkedIn as well. We post quite, quite a lot of free content on areas like this in the, the Microsoft 365 space as well. But with that, I want to say thanks very much. Have a nice weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.